Welcome to Curacao Salvage. I am Stotty. This is the end of the British summer. And can I please introduce you to the slug. This is actually my first ever salvage. I bought this with a knackered ignition barrel. I'll put some stock footage on in a minute because I didn't really record a great deal when I first got it. And I wasn't going to put my face on because, you know, it's too pretty, but it is what it is. Um, I bought this when I had a X3 3 litre twin turbo thing and I decided I'd keep this because it made financial sense at the time to get rid of the X3 and actually save some money and this has been affectionately known as the slug mainly because it's sluggish as hell and doesn't really work so I bought this from a scaffolder bloke um, you'll see in a second but he put on these wonderful <coughs> wind deflectors which don't fit the side skirts which are canny enough however they are held on with wood screws so you know top notch this great spoiler didn't even get any like gasket stuff to stick in there he put on this exhaust which looks canny enough but does absolutely nothing in terms of sound I've spoke to the mechanic and he's basically said you can stick a comb filter on, you can straight pipe it, and you will get nothing out of that. So, I'd never did it. I did want to keep this and make a part of the channel, and I had a whole thing of being like, slug life. Um, however, it's just too wrecked. It's got new brakes on, it's got new suspension bits somewhere. Can't remember what I did. I bought black handles to put on, I bought black LED indicators to switch out. I honestly think it's going to cost about 500 quid, if not more, to put it right. And there's just no value in it. It's currently got 160,000 miles on, but the gauges knacked. So I had to buy new gauges, and that car had 173 on. So the car lies. Um, it goes in limp mode, can't go above three and a half thousand revs which you shouldn't really have to but because it's so slow even though it's a 2.2 and four-wheel drive it's just it's just not the one anymore it served its purpose it's still currently got six months of test on so i'm going to sell it basically as a winter beater and hope that somebody just comes along and gives us as much as possible uh, so i don't lose an absolute fortune on it but at the end of the day it's a Honda, and some old boy might want it, even with all the faults. It's amazing how wet you get, especially when you haven't got hair. Eh, lovely. So yeah, this is what I'm referring to. I've had to put in newer gauges, which is very obnoxious with this thing in the middle. Plus all these lights up. Um, it's put an extra 13,000 miles on the car. So that's all very annoying to drive with. Plus, I'm pretty certain that the front left diff is leaking. Um, all the front electric, eh, front electric, front suspension, track rods, drop links, all that are knackered. There's nothing on them whatsoever. Uh, so that's more money. The handbrake, oh my god. The handbrake in this is very funky, but I've literally got to have it like vertical to be able to steer on an incline of like 12 degrees or something, it's ridiculous. The stereo, my side buttons don't work anymore. So I've got to pull this down in order to move these across. These lovely cushions, uh, seat covers I've got because the seats are minging even though I've cleaned them. So I've got proper Nana covers in so you're not sitting on crap and there's no way to put your sunglasses so you've got to look like an absolute knobhead with them there but apart from that it's a really canny car so the only real damage to the car itself to look at was this damage on the front of the car everything else was kind of just old worn out bit of used bit abused um However, the worst part of it was the interior. I thought getting into that Beemo was bad. 
but the thing with regards to the slug, <laughs> the interior was just workman dirty. It's like getting into a transit van. It belonged to a scaffolder, and he treated it like a van. Um, the seats were just minging. Like it, it wasn't like dirt. Like he was dirty. It was just dirt from his job, per se. That was the thing with that. But the reason why I got the car and it was a salvage was the ignition barrel was chewed to hell. So I ended up getting the ignition barrel and swapping that out for a new one, which was a task in itself. The paintwork was dull as hell on the car that had no life in it. So I don't know when the car was last cleaned. I cannot get the alloys clean for love nor sausage. But I swapped the barrels out. Had diff three different companies come out. They couldn't get the car to work. But I did. And it was mainly because... Actually, no. I'll, ta I'll, I'll come on to that. Yeah, I couldn't really cope with the dirt of inside whilst trying to repair it. So I thought, sod it. I'm going to clean it first. During cleaning it, I found a free 12mm socket. Which is, is nice. But since the bloke was a builder and he tried it like a van, as I've mentioned, um, the boot was just like a pure sand pit. I would love to know how many actual kilos of sand was in that spare wheel well. Because it was a fair old whack. But the reason why it wouldn't start was I didn't swap over the black ignition ring onto the new barrel. And thankfully I kept it. And because of that, keep the parts because you might need them. And once I got that working, I decided that I would machine polish the car. See if I could get some life into it. At the end of the day, it's a black car, so black does clean up really nice. I then attacked the interior with an impact gun with a clean and brush head thing on it. And, oh my word... That changed the car tenfold. I did replace the car mats as well. So yeah, this is the dirt that was on the screen. And this was after I had already machine... Uh, not machine polished, what's its face? Wet vac the seats. So can you imagine how much stuff would have come out of that car originally had I done this in the first place. I had to open the windows just to get the stuff to come out. Part of me thinking with regards to keeping this car was the fact that it was cheaper to run than the X3 and bigger. So like when I got the bumper for the Antara, it fit in no problem at all. Because it's four wheel drive, like the CRV, um, it meant that when I was going off on dirt tracks, because that's where a lot of scrap car people have yards, obviously it's not like pristine tarmac, it meant this could just bounce along. And it does. But it's got a knackered spring on the back. I bought it, never got around to putting it on, mainly because, well, slug, and I have zero cares for this. I never really have. Uh, it served its purpose. It was the very first car that I did anything to. I did the service, first ever one I've done. I did the handbrake shoes um, twice, because I messed up the first time. Um, so it has been useful it's taught us things but the time has come to say goodbye ah well let's not get too emotional so we're back at the farmer's field and it's just interesting to see how much it's changed and you know this is where the profit from the volvo disappeared over the hill ain't no slug in my life it is gone no more strife apart from me new daily driver that's got issues so yeah slug's gone um even though my new daily driver which you'll get introduced to in the next video has issues it is a million times better than that bloody honda crv uh, i did mess up a little bit because i listed it with all of its faults everything because you know i'm not going to sell a car that's dodgy and not tell people um and I'd seen one come up on Marketplace for 800 quid, perfect working order. So I thought I kind of put mine up for more than that. 
so I stuck it up for 700 and I, honestly I felt like a celebrity because within about five minutes I had 20 different people messaging us um, people send us their address, phone numbers, can I send you like bank now, I'll send you all the money over Asking stupid questions, stuff I'd already listed as you always get with selling a car um, One boy basically turned around and said, I'll get, because I'll put in the advert, runs, drives, stops Hey guys, I'll give you 500 quid now for it I said no um, I said I'll come to 650 Hey guys, I'll go up to 6 and you don't have to deal with any more numpties. I'll come and give you the money now and pick the call up tomorrow. So I did that. I did think I'd only get 400 for it because it had both cats on and I'd seen it as scrap value. But apparently people love Hondas. So that's gone. Very happy it's gone. Um, it was it was fun having a car that I gave zero, zero cares about. But then it was also a little bit dangerous because I gave zero cares about it. The most annoying thing was the fact that the handbrake didn't work. That done my absolute napper in. It was horrendous. Um, so I am in my new daily driver as we currently speak. I'm sure some of you will be able to tell what it is from headrests or the colour blue. If you do know, put it in the comments below. But you'll find out what this car is fully in the next video. But until then, this is me, Foxtrot Oscar.